Hello and welcome back to COVID Coaching. This is Joel Howley, not coaching COVID, but coaching water skiing while having COVID. I keep doing these tests thinking that I'm going to be allowed outside, but it just doesn't sort of appear to be working that way. Anyway, if you want some coaching of your water skiing, put a link in the comments of this YouTube video. So a Dropbox or a Google Drive link, I'll download the video and then we will critique your water skiing on the internet for everybody to have a look at. Doesn't that sound awesome? Uh, the first one is Carter. So I might play the video and then we will pull it apart. Carter, not too shabby. That was 22 off, 34 miles an hour. And Carter has mentioned in his comment that when he goes to 28 off, he gets slack at one ball. Uh, I completely understand that that is very likely to happen after watching his skiing. Your skiing, mate, is not too bad, to be honest. He said in his comments, I'm sure I have a lot to fix, but wanted to get your thoughts. Honestly, there's not a whole lot to fix, but there is a big thing to fix. We've got to stop you absorbing those wakes. Absorbing the wakes at 22 and 15 off is not the worst thing. It's almost sort of necessity uh, to learn it, especially. But when you're looking at skiers that run 28 off and beyond, none of them absorb the wakes. You might get skiers that absorb the wakes at 28 off, but those skiers typically can't then go and run 32 off. To be a skier that runs 28 off, runs 32 off, has a crack at 35 off, you are not allowed to absorb the wakes. You lose far too much energy, puts a lot of movement into your skiing and at 28 off the buoy's coming up very fast um, and it's going to cause chaos, likely cause you to line drive at the buoy, get slack at the back of it. Honestly, Carter, if you stand strong across those wakes and stop absorbing, a lot of things will sort themselves out. I believe underlying it all, um, you're attempting to ski a good path. You've got nice pre-turn. A lot of things look good, but there is um, quite a big issue with what you're doing across those wakes. Sometimes you tell people to stop absorbing the wakes with their knees and they stop absorbing the wakes with their knees. Um, there's a chance you're not one of those people and you will have some struggles to stop absorbing the wakes. Uh, yeah, I believe a good Thing to think about when you are struggling um, to keep your knees from absorbing the wakes um, is not sort of thinking about pushing your legs away from your body but just thinking about holding your legs in a certain position and there's not many times um, other than when you're water skiing where this is required so it's a skill that a lot of people struggle with um, but to do that you really need to understand that once you enter the trough, which is the spot just before the first wake, uh, there's a hole, you know, the boat, the water sort of drops down. So you've got a lot of pressure under your feet. Then when you hit the trough just before hitting the wakes, that pressure goes to almost zero. So often um, in an attempt to not extend your legs, people tend to soften them. And then you case on the first wake and that's when the massive absorbing begins, even when you're not attempting to absorb the wakes. So if you finish your turn, and are heading into the wakes and you really just think about holding all your muscles tight and not pushing, I believe that's a far better way to keep your legs still. Um, and honestly, like even just when you're sitting um, in a chair or standing up, you really should have the ability to immediately tense all your muscles to full contraction without causing any movement. And I have done this experiment with a few people and realized that not everybody can do that. Um, it is just a learned skill, but you really should have no issues with completely tensing up any part of your body, really, without initiating any movement. And I'm talking glutes, hammies, quads, calves, even your feet, um, and then whatever those muscles are on the front of your shin, they should be tensed up too. Um, your whole leg as one piece when you're heading into that wake should be completely tensed. And if you do that and hold, you will smash through the wakes and there'll be a far bigger impact on your body as you go through the wakes. But as you roll through the edge change, you won't be bouncing all over the place. And at 28 off where the swing of the edge change is quite aggressive, 
you'll actually find that you come into the buoy having initiated some pre-turn opposed to coming into the buoy bouncing all over the place going straight at it with the ski wobbling and your body and head going in different directions so carter hopefully that helps mate honestly um it's a big one to change but if you change it you'll have no problem running 28 off and having a good dig at, at 32 off so stick to it make the change and send me another video all righty next up is brian i will play his video Brian not too shabby mate um yeah you've got good speed across the way it's, it's good to see and you look fully committed to getting that speed there's no sort of hesitation um very good to see I believe the biggest flaw in your skiing um is not really a technique issue it looks like an issue with what you're intending to do uh I believe you're waiting until you get to the buoy to begin your rotation and start going the other way, especially on those first few buoys where you got out there pretty early, I would like to see you sort of begin a bit of turn before getting to the ball. I believe you've got the width, you definitely have the speed to do this. And what I'm looking for when I'm watching these videos is that even at 22 off, as you're coming into the buoy, when you're watching it from the boat, there should be water up behind your head prior to you actually getting to the buoy and that water indicates that you've actually started a bit of pre-turn you've loaded the ski up and it's shooting water out the far edge of the ski uh, what we're we seeing here is you're just sort of standing there waiting until you get to the buoy and then when you get there you're doing a great turn i mean someone that can turn like that typically can run 28 off it's just that you have to have begun that turn much earlier um, and that will sort of give you an ability to finish the turn at the ball. However, I would put in that you sort of do occasionally finish your turn at a good spot. So I feel like the secondary impact and what will be more important for you is that beginning that turn earlier is actually gonna slow you down and you won't have any issues with extra speed when you do uh, get to those buoys. So yeah, mate, if you can, just start your turn earlier. It's a simple one. You've got the speed and the width to do it, so just commit to it. If you turn in front of a few buoys, that's fine. I almost want you to turn in front of at least a few to find the limit of what's turning too early because at the moment you're waiting way too long. But um, not too bad. Not too bad. Very good, Brian. Alrighty, next up is Vince. Let's have a look at Vince. <laughs> Vince, very nice. Uh, looks like a cracking spot you're skiing at here. I believe that you are aiming to do the right thing across the wakes. First of all, I think it's pretty evident that your turns are much better than your weight crossings. I dare say you're aware of that. I think, yeah, across these wakes, given the amount of different things that happen, I really feel like underneath it all, it looks like you're aiming to do the right thing. You're not trying to absorb the wakes. You're not trying to break at the hips. Um, you're not trying to stand up before the first wake. However, each of those things happens and happens quite regularly. I believe just in my feel from watching this, that the reason all that's happening is that you're just tensing up too much. I would like to see you relax across the wakes. 
we're not looking to have you smash through the wakes like we were trying to get Brian to do. Um, I believe with where you're at, a little bit of absorbing the wakes is fine. It's far more important that we get you to keep that ski on edge. Um, and the best way to keep that ski on edge is going to be to absorb the wakes a little bit with your knees, ideally, not your hips. But underneath all of this, I really do believe you're doing a good job of aiming for the right things. You're just so tensed up that there's no give in your body. Um, and when the rope comes too tight, it pulls you up. When you hit the wakes, it folds you at the hips. Um, and as a result of either one of those things, you're also pulling the handle in towards your body a little bit too much. So honestly, Vince, mate, I believe if you do those cracking turns you've currently got and then just relax, just lean back, let your arms come out and just relax across the wakes, everything will open up for you. You'll, you'll find that you actually are staying on edge yeah, you'll be moving across the wakes, but that's not such a big deal. You're going to be absorbing the wakes. That's fine. What you will be doing now, if you do succeed at relaxing more, is keeping the ski on edge. And there's nothing wrong with keeping it on edge for a little bit too long, especially when you're free skiing. Just hold that edge, get through those wakes, and we're aiming for an edge change that doesn't happen while you're bouncing all over the place. We want a nice, smooth edge change. Um, so it's a bit of a simple one. It might be a bit hard to implement because it is hard to relax when you know, you're know you picking up 70 odd kilometers an hour and heading towards um, a speed bump, which the wakes generally do feel like when you're getting to those speeds. But mate, just relax into it and you should find yourself um, getting some nice smooth rhythmic skiing happening. All right, good luck with that one, Vince. All righty, next up is Jeff. Let's have a look at Jeff's skiing. Jeff, that's not too bad, mate. That's a pretty good 15 off at 34 mile per hour pass. My dilemma as a coach when I'm watching someone run a pass reasonably well is do you pick that specific pass apart or do you take a guess at what you believe will then become their issues as the boat goes faster and the rope goes shorter? My typical answer to that little dilemma is to always just take a guess at what I believe will hold them back when the rope is shortened, um, opposed to just trying to get them to run each pass better. Because I mean, there are a multitude of things that you could pick on for any one pass that even when run reasonably well. So I think where we're gonna land with Jeff skiing here is to pick apart what's happening at the exit of his turns. Um, the beginning of your turns, Jeff, are, are pretty fast, but then relative to someone that is going to be running 28 off, and 32 off, the end of your turns are quite slow. And not only that, but they just don't quite finish. I would argue that your ski's not really completing the turn and getting underneath the rope prior to you sort of loading against it and starting to shoot across to the other side of the wakes. Um, generally speaking, if you're watching elite level skiers, or maybe we take it back a step, if we just talk, we're watching, let's watch, you know, the average skier at a uh, 32 or 35 off pass, um, you are going to see those skiers overturn. Um, so the rope might, the, the ski might come on under the rope too much. They will really, it'll reset and then they'll go. That's a common thing that you see in elite level skiers and skiers that are you know, just a bit higher level than what Jeff is at, that are sort of running 32, 35 off. Um, what you don't typically see um, from either of those two groups of skiers on the short lines is them consistently under turning, um, not completing their turns or having slow finishes to the turn. Um, typically once you're running those shorter lines you've sorted this out and so all I'm getting at Jeff is it looks like in your skiing there is a bit of a fundamental issue here with what you're up to at the back of the turns and if we can fix that um, maybe you become one of those skiers that runs 32 35 off so as for why the end of your turns are slow and not quite finishing 
I believe it's purely what you're doing with your front leg. Even as I watched your gait glide, you stood up in that gait glide and really straightened that front leg before you turned in. Didn't really cause an issue with your gait glide, but then I saw you straighten your front leg at one ball um, and you got a decent turnout of one, so I also wasn't too worried about that. But then by the time you get to two, you're still straightening that front leg sort of to push the ski into the water. And then you're using that pressure that you get back to initiate your turn. Your turn's starting quite well, but as you continue to push on that front leg, you end up pushing the front of the ski down and it doesn't quite flick around far enough. Um, so I know this is a simple um, little change. It is occasionally a difficult one to implement, but I would like to see you turn the ski without pushing down on your front leg. So the reason it's difficult is because what Jeff is doing here is given that he's not going overly fast, just due to the fact that it's um, 15 off, Jeff's able to push on his front leg, sit the ski deep into the water, travel for a foot, and then have that water pressure push back against him. And that pushing back against him is what's sort of beginning the turn. And it does kind of work. It just causes issues if you then keep pushing like Jeff is and it then makes you not quite finish your turn. Um, the reason we don't typically want people turning like that is once you up the speed by shortening the rope um, and having to sort of fling up on the boat higher, that doesn't exactly work because you sort of eventually get to a speed, even at 28 off, where you push on that front leg and instead of the ski sinking down into the water and then pushing back on you to rotate, it just slides away from you and won't even initiate the turn anymore at all. So not only is pushing on that front leg causing issues for Jeff um, at 15 off here, it's definitely gonna cause issues if we were to go and shorten that rope for Jeff. So Jeff, next time, um, let's begin at the gate. Try and turn in for the gate without straightening your front leg. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do that. Just a little bend, nothing crazy. What you will find hard is as you come into one ball, we now want you to turn that ski without straightening your front leg. So there's a million ways to turn a ski without straightening your front leg. I really don't care which one of them you pick. Um, a few to choose from um, is to sort of try and point your knees where you want to go. Other people do a sequence with their hip where they sort of drop their hip to the inside. Other people just look over in the direction where they want to go and that begins their turn. Um, others rotate their shoulders. Um, I really don't care, Jeff. Just find a way to initiate the turn of your ski without straightening your front leg and assuming um, it's not some other version of straightening or stiffening your legs, I believe that ski will then rotate and flick under the rope at the end of the turn, and you'll find that you begin to really finish your turns fast, and you will occasionally overturn wheelie, have to reset and go, but that's fine. That's an elite level mistake that lots of people make. So anyway, Jeff, just um, yeah, don't straighten that front leg, mate. Find a way to turn that ski without straightening the front leg. Um, risk blowing the tail, just give it a good crack. If you sort that out, mate, your skiing will improve heaps. Anyway, crew, hope that helped. If you want free coaching, Dropbox or Google Drive link in the comments of this video on YouTube and um, I'll have a look at it. I hear it's warming up in America, so get out there and get skiing.